Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are switching relays or fan relays. So you can refer to them as either one of those, but these two are the most common, and I'm going to be taking you in for an up-close image of how the contacts work. So I'm going to be going over the voltage path, how they work, and also the troubleshooting. This video is sponsored by Danfoss, and you can check out their Cooling United support hub to access free HVACR tools and resources. The details are down in the description section below. So here we have our 12 amp fan relay and here it's out of the box right there so you can see the contacts. But I'm going to be taking up for a close up image of these and I'm actually going to power these with 24 volts on the coil so you can see the contacts moving. Same thing with this one right here, the 8 amp fan relay. But I just want to go over what these ratings mean. So this particular one's made by White Rogers and you see that from 1 to 3 that's the coil. And when you power the coil with 24 volts what's going to happen is these normally open sets of contacts between two and four, they're going to close. And the normally closed set of contacts between five and six, they're going to open up. So on this one, the quill is over on these two contacts there and there. And then you have your five and six right here and down here. And then you have your two and four right here and right there. Now you're going to be able to see the numbers on the top of this relay, but I just wanted to sh quickly show you how that works. So what you'd do is you'd have, say, 120 volts on the 2, and then when you powered from 1 to 3 with 24 volts, what would happen is from 2 to 4 would close, and your 120 volts would go from here over to 4, and then it can complete the circuit. But here we have our ratings right here, and it says 12 FLA. So that's full load amps. What that means is that you can draw on a motor say up to 12 amps across the contacts from 2 to 4 or 5 to 6. And that is a inductive load so that's like a, a motor or something like that. And then you have your 60 LRA so that's locked rotor amps. So that means that when a motor turns on it may draw more than up to 12 amps and this relay should be able to handle that for that quarter second when a motor is turning on and then the, the current should be below 12 amps while it's running. So that's for a motor or something like that. But down here, and that will be for 120 volts going across the, the contact, for 240 volts across the contact, you see that you can only have up to eight full load amps. So that means what it's running at all the time. And your locked rotor amps for, for when the motor is initially turning on can only be up to 48. And right here you see that you can have 18 amps drawn across the contacts from 5 to 6 or 2 to 4 it's, if it's a resistive load. So that means something like an electric resistance heater or something like that. Now the reason that you can draw more amps with a resistive load is it's more steady of a current. So, so that's why that amperage rating is higher. Now all those ratings right here have to do with the contacts and not with the coil. The coil is basically you're turning it into an electrical magnet and it's sucking the contacts. So I'm going to show you what that looks like when we power this coil of wire that's underneath of this uh, plastic shield right here and you can see, see how that works. Now this one up here is an 8 amp fan relay and you see that it's 8 full load of amps whether it's a, a motor that's running or whether it's electric resistance. So right here you have 8 amps either way. So the resistive load or the inductive load. Now up here you see that it says 18 LRA, so that's locked rotor amps. So if during the first quarter second when a motor turns on it's running that amount of amps and then it goes down below 8 amps, then it's okay to put across the contacts. So on the wiring diagram of this relay right here, you see that your coil is from 1 to 3. And then you're going to have your contacts right here from 4 to 5 are normally closed and from 4 to 2 are normally open. Now that's when the quill is not powered. So the wiring diagram here and here show the contacts with the quill in the non-powered state. So when you power the quill, from four to two are gonna be connected and from four to five are gonna be open. So these wiring diagrams show the contacts in the non-powered state. I also want you to remember that your quill is completely separate from your contacts. So they do not touch inside. So now you see we have our transformer hooked up to our fan relay, but it's not powered yet. And I just want to show you where we're powering at. And from 1 to 3, so you see 1 and 3, on this wiring diagram it shows that that's the coil. So that's our, our 24 volt load. And then you have from 4 to 5 are normally closed, and from 2 to 4 are open. But when we power that, this, this little 
lever basically is going to be going over to the two. So it's going to connect from four to two. So I want to show you what that looks like inside. So we're going to be supplying our coil, which is underneath this white plastic here with 24 volts. And it doesn't matter which of these two white wires is the 24 volt hot, and which one's the common, you're just powering a coil. Now that coil is going to turn into a magnetic load and it's going to suck. It's going to turn into an electrical magnet. It's going to suck this metal tight here. And when it does that, it's going to push this black piece of plastic right here over to the copper and it's going to be moving this. So just like that. So I'll go ahead and power this and show you what it looks like. So here's our 12 amp fan relay and we have our normally closed set of contacts up top and normally open down low. And when we power this coil that's underneath this white plastic, What's going to happen is it's going to suck this down and it's going to open up the contacts up top. So it does that with this piece of metal right here. You see that this piece of metal ends up having to get sucked up. So over here is where it gets sucked up at right here. And that's because of our 24 volt electrical magnet. So now let's go ahead and apply power. So we have our multimeter on resistance and we're reading OL, which means open line or over limit. And so basically from two to four is where we're at right now. And that's supposed to be normally open. This relay is not powered yet. We're about to power this. And so we should have 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance across these terminals very shortly. So then we're gonna test between our four and five right here after we do this test. So now we're powering the fan relay or switching relay and you see that we're reading 0.1 ohms of resistance and that may just be the alligator clip connections but we should be reading 0.0. .0. So we are powering it now and now we're not powering it. So now I'm going to switch our terminals right here. So we switched the bottom alligator clip and we're now on 4 and 5 which should be normally closed when the relay is not powered and presently the relay is not powered and we are reading 0.1 ohms of resistance. So now we're going to go ahead and power the relay with 24 volts to the coil at 1 and 3. And now you see that we're reading OL. Oh well. So that's while the relay is powered. Now we're going to disconnect the 24 volts from the 1 and 3 terminals. And now we have 0.1 ohms of resistance again. So that's how that one works. So right now our alligator clips are from 2 to 4, as you can see on the wiring diagram over here. And we're reading OL, which means that these are not connected, so that's open line or over limit. And now we're going to go ahead and power from 1 to 3, and we're going to power the coil, and then our contacts at 2 and 4 should close. So you see it's reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So if it reads just a little bit higher than that, it's not a problem. If it's 0.1, that may just be your alligator clips or something like that. But if there was a high resistance reading across them, then that means that the terminals are actually burnt uh, or corroded basically they're they're not touching each other well enough so now we're on from five to six and you see that we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance between five and six and that's what it says in this wiring diagram right here and that's with the relay not powered so let's go ahead and power the relay and now you see it reads open line so that means that those connections are no longer touching and now the power is off again and we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance again. So that's how that works. So I want you to know that switching relays are actually found on control boards as well, but these are soldered into the board. I actually took the black plastic case off of this so you could see it. it. This basically is looking just the same as what this looks like. And so anytime you see one of these black boxes, it's a fan relay. So I'm going to be going over the troubleshooting of these, and that's a problem that happens on control boards as well, where the contacts get pitted or the coil shorts out or you have different other issues but now i'm going to show you some of the common problems found with switching relays so here we have an 8 amp fan relay and we're reading the resistance on the coil between 1 and 3 and you see our multimeter set to ohms so we're reading 86.6 ohms of resistance so that's on a good 8 amp fan relay now let me show you what one looks like if it's bad So on this one you see that we're reading OL, 
which means that the coil is actually not touching at all, so it's burned apart. And here you have one that we're reading kilo ohms. So the resistance value is so high, it actually will not turn into a magnet to suck the, uh, suck the metal across, so it's not going to open and close the contacts. So this one is actually bad as well, even though it does have a resistance value, because the resistance value is just way too high. And that's due to part of that coil may have started to burn out. It's not completely burnt apart yet, but it's partially burnt. So here you see that we have a 12 amp fan relay, and we're reading the resistance across the coil from 1 to 3, and we're reading 74.6 ohms of resistance. So that's an example of a good relay. Now we'll read another good relay right here. And that one's reading 89.7 ohms of resistance across the coil. This one right here is an example of a bad one. So the coils actually burn apart and we're reading oh well. I also want to show you what these contacts look like after a long time of use. You see that this one's black in there. And so what you're going to have is sometimes there's pitting and, and when this is supposed to be closing, such as this right here, it may not be reading 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance. You may have a high resistance reading and your, your actual voltage is not making it across the contacts. So in that case, a relay will be bad. Sometimes they get burnt together like this, and so it's actually closed all the time when it should be open. So now we're going to go ahead and take a uh, resistance reading across some contacts that are actually stuck in the closed position. So right now we're on 2 and 4, and the problem with this is that we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. That means that those contacts are actually burnt together. So those are, are stuck in the closed position. And let's just take a reading from 5 to 6. So something happened inside of here. It got burnt or stuck, or maybe the spring broke or something like that, and these normally open contacts are closed. But let's go ahead and check from 5 to 6. So now we're reading the resistance value between 5 and 6, and they should be closed, as you can see right here. 5 and 6 should be normally closed. And you see 5 and 6 are numbered on the top right here, and we're reading oh well. So that means that the contacts are not together, they're not closed, and so that's a problem. That means that that relay is bad. Make sure to check out our free resources over at acservicetech.com. We also have our paperback and ebook available there as well, along with the full outline. This paperback is also available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.